Hello, and welcome to Improving Health Through Managing Stress. Before we get started with introductions, a few friendly reminders about our webinar. Today's event will be recorded. We invite you to submit questions during today's discussion through the question and answer feature. We'll do our best to answer your questions throughout the presentation. And if needed, a live transcript is available, an available option and may be turned on or off by selecting the closed caption or live transcript option from the menu at the bottom of your screen. We're delighted that you're all here today. I'm Tammy Summers and I'm a clinical psychologist and associate professor in the Department of Psychiatry and Behavioral Sciences. I co-lead the Behavioral Medicine Clinical Program and internship training through the Duke Cancer Patient Support Program. Our program offers supportive interventions to patients with cancer and their family members. We use psychosocial and behavioral strategies to help with a number of problems, including distress related to cancer, problems with specific fears or anxiety related to cancer, weight loss, sleep difficulties, memory problems, and pain management, just to name a few. Our group also studies interventions for distress and symptom management, and we're, we're conducting a number of funded clinical trials at the Duke Cancer Institute. Today, you'll have the pleasure of hearing from Dr. Hannah Fisher and Dr. Kelly Hyland. They are both trainees that have been supported through the Duke Cancer Patient Support Program. They came to Duke through a national match program they were first clinical psychology interns at the Cancer Center and are now postdoctoral fellows. Impressively, they both have been awarded funding for the National Cancer Institute to examine supportive interventions for patients with cancer. Dr. Fisher is currently conducting a novel study to improve sleep quality for patients during inpatient treatment for hematologic cancers. And Dr. Highland's developing and studying an intervention to help advanced stage cancer patients learn to increase their acceptance of their disease and live well with uncertainty related to their disease. Please settle in and enjoy the next several minutes with them as they talk about stress management and even give you a little bit of time to relax. All right, welcome everyone. We're really excited to have you all here with us today. My name is Hannah Fisher. Before we really dive into the content, we wanted to actually practice some relaxation with you right away. We're gonna do a mini relaxation practice. Mini relaxation is often taught as a very brief relaxation technique that can be used to keep stress levels low throughout the day. It's really useful because it can be done in about 30 to 60 seconds. It can be done anywhere, anytime, eyes closed, eyes shut, and it's really effective for reducing stress and tension. Overall, it's kind of like a pause button and helps you get your day get back on track. We had a question ahead of today's session about what stress management techniques can be used in the moment of stress that won't make you too relaxed but are still really effective at reducing stress. The mini relaxation practice is an excellent option. Now, there are two major components of mini relaxation. The first is muscle relaxation. One way to think about relaxing your muscles is to let the surface that you're sitting on do its work. For instance, if you're sitting in a chair right now, let the chair do the work. Don't do the work for the chair, just relax. Let your body drift down to the pull of gravity and let the chair hold your weight. Scan your body, making sure all your muscles are relaxed from the top of your head all the way down through the tips of your toes. Notice if there are any areas in your body where you're holding tension. The second component is breathing. During the mini relaxation, we want to shift your breath down to the lower part of your belly. Breathing deeply from that lower part of your belly versus the upper part of your chest. You should feel your belly expand like a balloon as you inhale and then contract back down as you exhale. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and try this together. I'm gonna to guide you through a quick mini relaxation practice. So take a minute to get comfortable. Get as comfortable as you can. And when you're ready, 
let your eyes close. Let the chair support your weight and allow yourself to become limp like a rag doll. Take a smooth, slow, deep breath, allowing your lungs to fill slowly and fully. And then exhale. Take another slow, deep breath, pausing at the top of your breath. And then think the word relax and slowly exhale. Letting all the tension drain from your body. Let your breath continue at a natural, easy pace. Noticing feelings of relaxation spreading throughout your body. Feel it spread into your face, down through your jaw, Allow sensations of heaviness and relaxation to flow downward through your shoulders, through your arms and your hands, down into your stomach, into your legs and all the way out through your feet and the tips of your toes. Enjoy these sensations of relaxation that you have created for yourself. And when you're ready, return your attention back to the session, opening your eyes and becoming aware of what's going on around you. Noticing how your body can be calm while your mind is active. Okay, so hopefully that put you in a good headspace. And I'm now gonna pass it off to Kelly. Wow, I wish every presentation started with a relaxation <laughs> exercise. That was wonderful. Thanks. Great. All right. Awesome. So I'm going to talk a little bit about cancer as a source of stress. So when we're talking about stress, we're talking about the body's response to physical, mental, or emotional pressure. And stress causes chemical changes in your body. And so you might notice things like increases in blood pressure, heart rate, changes in blood sugar levels. And this can lead to feelings of frustration, anger, depression, sadness. And we know that stress can be caused by normal life activities. So things like pressure at work or school, relationship issues, uh, financial worry. And stress can also be caused by events like a cancer diagnosis. And we know that being diagnosed with a disease like cancer or helping to take care of somebody with cancer can be a really stressful experience and it can impact lots of different aspects of life. So what we've got here are some of those different aspects of life that cancer might impact. So in that top yellow box, you'll see some examples of physical or medical challenges associated with cancer that can be stressful. So this might include things like effects of cancer and its treatment, like fatigue and nausea, late and secondary effects, like effects on fertility and body image, fears of cancer progression or recurrence, and a pressure for lifestyle changes and the need for lifelong follow-up care. Um, down below in that green box, you'll see some examples of how stress associated with cancer can also impact emotions. So it might cause feelings of anxiety or depression. It might impact quality of life or identity, intimacy. Um, this blue box up in the top right corner shows some of the, the social stressors associated with cancer. So thinking about how to communicate about illness with family and friends. Um, communicating risk status based on genetic testing, um, as well as just the, the stress of taking care of yourself as well as others. And then finally, some of the practical challenges that can be really stressful. So things like coordinating appointments or travel, the cost of medical care and insurance, um, concerns about finances and decisions around employment. So this is really just the tip of the iceberg. And so I'd invite you all to think a little bit about what are some of the stressors that you have personally experienced 
as a cancer survivor or caregiver. And if there's anything that kind of comes to you that we don't have up here, I would invite you to share that using the Q&A function. So we'll give you a minute or two to think about this. Okay, so we'll let people fill in um, those responses as they're able. I'm gonna go ahead and move on to the next slide here, which is all about flavors of stress. So I want you to take a moment and consider this question here. How does stress show up for you? Now, for some people, they might notice their behaviors changing when they're stressed. For example, you might start to avoid activities, or maybe you notice physical changes, like tension or headaches, stomach aches. Um, for, for other people, stress can be felt emotionally, so you might feel irritable. Sometimes our thoughts can change when we're stressed as well, and we may even notice our social habits shifting. Some people might isolate when they're stressed or perhaps the opposite. They might lash out towards people that they love. Becoming familiar with your personal flavor of stress is really the first step in increasing awareness of stress and then taking the first step towards managing that stress. So I want you guys to do just a quick activity with me. And I want you to um, find your personal flavor of stress. So take a look at these stress-related symptoms here on the left side of the screen. Scan through those and check off either mentally or on a piece of paper there if you have one in front of you, any symptoms that seem familiar, any symptoms that show up for you when you're feeling stressed. Once you're done scanning the list, Go ahead and tally up your letters. So those letters that you see there at the end of each word and the parentheses, count those up. You may find that you have mostly Bs, which means that your stress shows up behaviorally. Or let's say you have mostly Ps, then stress typically manifests physically for you. The key is located on the right side in that blue box. So take a moment or two and scan through this list here and find your flavor of stress. And if you're comfortable, we'd love for you to go ahead and type that in to the Q&A section. And Kelly, don't be shy, you can do it too. <laughs> Okay, so I'm seeing physical. I'd say that's probably one of my flavors for sure. Eating, yeah, so that's gonna be behavior. So when you're stressed, you might eat more or maybe you might eat less. Um, so your behaviors are shifting. Emotional, okay. Some people are Neapolitan style, three-way three mix of emotional, behavioral, cognitive. A lot of emotional is coming through. Irritability, yes, so, so common. Heavy on the E, physical, emotional, behavioral. So we're running the gamut. Um, and there's really no right or wrong flavor, just like we all have our own flavors we like to get at the ice cream store. Um, the point is, is that you can sort of learn how stress shows up for you. That way you can be aware of it, notice when it's showing up, and then take that next step towards managing the stress. All right, thanks guys, this was fun. So I'm gonna push us forward and bounce it back to Kelly. Awesome, great. So we have talked about how cancer might cause stress, 
and we've talked about how stress might show up for each of you, but why is stress, managing stress important? Why are we talking about it? So as I mentioned earlier, stress can negatively impact our mental health and lead to feelings of frustration, anxiety, and depression. So one advantage of better managing stress is that you might experience more positive emotions. You can feel happier. Um, you might feel more productive because you have more time and energy to devote to other things instead of being stressed. Um, this can also give you more emotional energy and resilience to manage other stressors as they might show up. In terms of physical health, uh, as we've talked about a little bit, stress causes chemical changes in your body that can lead to health problems. So by better managing stress, you can boost your immune system so that you're better able to fight illness. Um, you can experience more balanced hormones. You might experience better sleep. I know someone put in the Q&A that stress impacts sleep, which is something we experience a lot. Um, and then you might also experience just less of those negative physical consequences of stress. I saw a lot of peas on that last screen. So by better managing stress, maybe you have less stress headaches, less joint pain, lower blood pressure, and all of that together can help to reduce your risk for other chronic health problems and may also help you better tolerate cancer treatments. Um, finally, we know that stress can make it tough to manage emotions. And one common effect of this is that we might get short or kind of lash out at the people that we care about the most or just have difficulty communicating how we're feeling. So by better managing stress, we might be able to have healthier relationships and better communication and be better able to both provide and receive support from other people. Okay, so before we go over two really well-researched stress management techniques, we want to hear a little bit from you what strategies you all are currently using to manage stress. So again, in the Q&A section, if you could just type out, you know, what, what are some of your go-to strategies, techniques that you do when you're feeling stressed to try to feel better? Meditation in nature, watching TV, taking walks, exercising, meditation, journaling, gosh, lots. Okay, I can't even keep up. Yoga, writing poetry, painting, going outside, using the Breathe app on the Apple Watch, napping. Awesome, these are great. <clears throat> exercise, definitely. Moving, exercise, being outside. I'm sort of picking up on a theme here. Those are all really great strategies. Tai Chi. Leaning on spirituality. Awesome, prayer. Good, good, good. Thank you all for, for sharing some of your your techniques. What, what we're going to focus on today are, are just two of, of many, like you've all, you know, entered in the chat. There are a number of things you can do, but the two that we're going to focus on are backed by research. So, uh, you know, a, a large body of research supports using progressive muscle relaxation and pleasant activity planning to manage stress. So we're going to start with progressive muscle relaxation. All right. So this is exciting. We get to actually practice one of these techniques. So we're going to talk a little bit about it, go through a demonstration, and then we're actually all going to do this together. Um, so this skill is one of our fan favorites around here. It's called progressive muscle relaxation. Um, I would invite you to keep an open mind and kind of see what you notice in your body and your mind both before and after the practice. So kind of check in with yourself, see how you're feeling, any spots where you notice uh, tension, and then I'll invite you to do that again towards the end. So what are we gonna do here? So progressive muscle relaxation is a relaxation-based technique where we notice feelings of stress and tension and then feelings of relaxation across our body. 
And PMR is helpful because it improves our ability to recognize what it feels like when we are tense and then what it feels like when we are relaxed so that we can notice tension earlier and release it. And by carrying less tension in our bodies, we can experience less things like pain, fatigue, stress, better sleep. Um, so this little diagram here shows you which of the muscle groups we're gonna focus on. So we're gonna start down at our feet and work our way up through our legs, stomach, hands, shoulders, and then to our face. And we're going to be guided through this, but I want everyone to try out a couple of these movements with me first. Um, and one important point before we jump in, if there are any areas where you already experience pain or are just really tender, we don't wanna make it worse. We don't wanna make you experience more pain. So for those places, just really focus on the relaxation aspect. So I'd invite everyone to kind of settle into a comfortable position here. Hopefully you are sitting in a comfortable chair, maybe even lying down. And let's start by all taking in a deep breath and let it go. So I'm gonna have everyone start by directing your attention to your feet. And I want you to slowly bend your feet back at your ankles, raising your toes towards your knees. Build the tension slowly, study it. Then think the word relax and slowly let the tension go. Now we're gonna focus our attention on our thighs. So I want you to tense up your thigh muscles without lifting your legs so your feet should not leave the floor. Notice that tension. Then. Think the word relax and slowly let the tension go. Next, we're gonna focus our attention on our hands. So I want you to build tension equally by bending your fingertips backwards towards your wrist. Notice what that feels like. And then think the word relax and slowly let the tension go. Finally, we're gonna to move to our shoulders. So we're gonna raise our shoulders upwards, let the arms roll out, let your head tilt back, and then think the word relax and let the tension go. So that was just a brief preview of kind of exactly what this looks like. And now we're gonna do a real practice. Um, I would invite you to close your eyes during this practice. We'll be guided through this. We can't see you, so don't worry what you look like. Nobody's watching. Um, we're gonna be doing the practice with you and we'll actually shut off our cameras as well so that everyone can really focus. This is gonna take about six minutes and afterwards we'll come back together and kind of think about and notice what, what we experienced. So here we go. Let your eyes drift shut and settle down as best you can. For the next few moments, begin to adopt an attitude that nothing is of much importance other than concentrating on this exercise and just relaxing. Begin by directing your attention to your feet. Slowly begin to bend both of your feet at the ankles, bending the feet upward so that the toes arc toward the knees. Build the tension slowly so that you can study it as it builds. Build it slowly under your control up to a point equally in both feet where they neither shake nor hurt. Now, think the word relax and slowly let that tension go. Now, Focus your attention on the muscles of the thigh. Tense these muscles without lifting your legs so that your feet do not leave the floor. Build the tension and study it. Now, think the word relax 
slowly letting the tension go. Study the relaxation flowing into your legs under your control. Let the relaxation flow deeper and deeper as your legs continue to relax. Now, focus your attention on your buttocks. Begin to tense these muscles by pinching them together and folding them upward and inward. Rolling your legs outward as you build the tension under your control. Feel yourself being lifted by the increasing tension under your control. Build the tension and hold it. Now, think the word relax and let the tension go. Let the chair support your weight completely. Now focus your attention on your stomach. Begin to tense these muscles by slowly pulling the belly button inward toward the backbone. Continue to breathe more and more with the upper part of your chest, building the tension under your control. Continue breathing with the upper half of the chest and notice that you can breathe regardless of where the tension is in your body. Hold that tension. Now, think the word relax and let your stomach sag, relaxing more and more under your own control. Now, direct your attention to your hands. Begin to build the tension in both hands equally by arching the fingertips backward, bending both hands at the wrist back toward the elbow. Build the tension under your control in the back of the hand and in the forearms. Hold that tension. Study it. Now, think the word relax and slowly let that tension go. Now, concentrate on the muscles in the back of your neck and your shoulders. Begin by raising the shoulders upward, letting your arms roll outward. Begin to tilt your head slowly backward, building the tension in the back and right between the shoulders. Don't force this exercise. Allow your mouth to open and breathe. Hold that tension. And when you're ready, think the word relax and let that tension go. Feel the relaxation of the back of your neck spreading out over your back, relaxing deeper and deeper. Now, bend your head forward, moving your chin towards your chest. Build the tension in the back of the neck and hold it. Study that tension. Now, think the word relax and let that tension go, allowing your head to return to a comfortable, relaxed position. Now, tense your neck by bending your head to the right side, moving your right ear towards your right shoulder. Again, build the tension, but don't force it. Hold the tension like that. Study it. Now say the word relax to yourself and let that tension go. Allow your head to return to a comfortable, relaxed position. Now bend your neck to the other side, moving your left ear towards your left shoulder. Again, build the tension gently. Hold that tension. Study it. Now, say the word relax to yourself and let the tension go. Allow your head to come rest in its most relaxed position. Now, focus your attention on your forehead. With your eyes still closed, begin to raise your eyebrows, wrinkling your forehead. You're building the tension in that part of your body under your control. Slowly build it up and hold it there. Study that tension. Now, think the word relax and let the relaxation flow. Continue relaxing for a moment or two and enjoy the pleasant feeling in your body which you've allowed to occur under your own control. Enjoy the deep calm you're providing yourself. In a moment, you'll open your eyes and you'll stretch your muscles. Notice how freely your breath is moving in your lungs. Go ahead and open your eyes, but let your body stay relaxed while your mind is active. 
Enjoy the benefits of the relaxation that you've provided yourself. You can get your body ready for your daily task at any time. But as you move through your day, work to take the calm you've provided yourself with you. Let your eyes drift shut and settle down. All right, welcome back. So I'd invite you to take a quick scan of your body and see what you notice. Um, were there any areas where you noticed a lot of tension? Are there any areas that you were particularly able to relax? Some people notice that they feel a little bit sleepy after practicing, and that's okay. This can actually be really helpful for insomnia or difficulty falling or staying asleep. Um, other people notice that they might feel light after practicing relaxation. Their body feels light. Maybe you feel warm. Maybe your muscles feel heavy. So I'd invite you to just notice what relaxation feels like for you right now. Um, and if you have any observations, feel free to share them in the Q&A. Um, of course, this is, you know, probably for a lot of people, the first time doing something like this. And we like to say it's like riding a bike. Um, so it's one of those things that often feels more comfortable and that we can actually probably do even better with more practice. And thinking about practice, there's a lot of great resources and ways for you to practice this. Um, so there's a lot of great resources available on YouTube that have different voices, different lengths, different kind of patterns of relaxation. So we would invite you to check those out and we're happy to share um, resources as well. Awesome. Okay, so moving on to our next skill, pleasant activity planning. So this skill is exactly what it sounds like, planning fun and pleasant activities. Not rocket science, pretty simple, but we often don't do this. The things that we enjoy usually get pushed to the bottom of our list of chores, work, responsibilities that we have to do which is a shame because this can be a really useful strategy for managing stress. Uh, engaging in fun activities improves your mood. You might have noticed while you're engaged in something you enjoy, you might almost forget about what you're feeling, uh, stress-wise, pain-wise, physical symptoms you might be having. It can be a really good distraction from those symptoms when you're engaged in a pleasant activity. And finally, it can instill a sense of accomplishment, especially if those activities are connected to your values in some way and, and sort of connect back to, to what's really important to you. So how you do this, pretty simple. First, you just need to brainstorm a list of fun activities actually go ahead and write them down on a piece of paper, make a list. Once you have that list, schedule a time to try one. So we actually encourage that you schedule a time and a place to practice your pleasant activity. So you're more likely to actually do it, just like you would schedule a doctor's appointment. Um, if, it, if it's not written down somewhere uh, in a calendar or in a iPhone calendar, you're gonna be more likely to push it off again for all of the stuff that you have to do. So a couple of suggestions for making your list. So we want the list to be really varied. Uh, include activities that you can do alone, as well as activities that are with other people. Make sure you include free activities, as well as activities that might require a little bit more financial planning. You can put things on the list that maybe you can't do right now, but want to do in the future as a goal to work towards. Anything goes. And the last thing I'll say is you wanna to try to make your list long. So the more the merrier. Go ahead and start your list today and then keep it handy. Maybe put it on your bedside table or up on your fridge and add to it. 
So as you think of more activities that you enjoy, just jot those down real quick. And before long, you're gonna have a really nice big list that you can use as sort of a cheat sheet for when you're feeling stressed or down. So we'd love to hear some of your ideas. So again, if you wanna just pop those into the Q&A section, um, we can all kind of start to generate our lists together. Gardening, great one. We hear that one a lot. Game night, perfect. Crafting, yard work, going to the beach. A dance party, love that. Spa day. Messaging a friend, that's excellent. Going to the park, watching the ducks. Going out to eat, golfing singing. These are great. These are some new ideas even for our group. Lunch, dinner, going to the movies. Really great variety from you all. I love that some of these are solo activities that you can do on your own, but then there's a lot of social activities as well. Also, a lot of these are, are free, right? Going out for a walk, going out for a hike. Now that doesn't require um, shelling over a lot of money. Puzzles, games, watching court shows. <laughs> I like that. You'll find that you know, your pleasant activity might not necessarily be someone else's pleasant activity and that's okay. It's what, what works for you, what sparks joy for you. Spending time with your dog, yes. Hanging out with pets, yoga, perfect. So I think you guys get the idea. I encourage you to, to actually, you know, take out a piece of paper maybe this evening and, and write these down, start your list. And like I said, keep that handy and it can be sort of a working draft that you can add to as time goes on. So the next time you're feeling really stressed and sort of in that moment of really acute stress, it is hard to think about what you can do to manage it. Now you have that sheet, you have that cheat sheet right there and you can, you can schedule one of those activities that you know work for you. And maybe you even add some of the things that you learned today, if they are pleasant and enjoyable to you, right? Yeah. People are giving us some really great ideas. Yeah, these are awesome. Um, I love, like you mentioned, the diversity of like kind of small, simple pleasures, right? Enjoying those moments that might already be there, but then also having things to look forward to. I think having a mix of those can be really helpful. Yeah, absolutely. A pleasant activity can be as small as enjoying a nice warm cup of coffee in the morning, sitting out on your patio and listening to the birds. It doesn't need to be some big, you know, activity that requires a lot of planning. Uh, it can be, but it can also be, you know, one of those simple pleasures too. Okay, so let's go ahead and move on to the next slide here. Kelly, I think you're going to talk about some resources that we have at DCI. Yes, yes, absolutely. So, um, as you've kind of heard throughout today, there are a lot of really wonderful resources at DCI at large, but we're going to talk specifically about ones that might be helpful for managing stress. Um, so you heard Tammy talk a little bit about the Duke Cancer Patient Support Program. And what this program does is provides free services to both cancer patients and their loved ones to help cope with the impact of cancer and kind of stress related to cancer. So these are just some of the examples of um, what these services might include or different types of things that they might help to treat. Um, so they do cognitive and memory screening, um, might help with symptoms of trauma or PTSD, treating sexual difficulties, 
health behavior or lifestyle coaching. Um, so if you want to make changes in exercise or activity, things like that, um, psychological assessments, if you've noticed maybe changes in your thinking or, or otherwise, um, behavioral weight management, difficulties with sleep. I've seen a lot of that pop up as insomnia being a symptom of stress related to cancer. We have great treatments for that. Um, different skills to cope with symptoms like pain and fatigue. You guys have seen or learned a couple of the ones that we teach in our research studies and programs um, for patients across DCI. So you got a little, little taste of that today. Other more general stress management techniques, as well as psychotherapy for symptoms of anxiety, depression, and adjustment to illness. So lots of different things that you might, um, might take advantage of here. Yes, and then it seems like maybe some of you are already aware of all the services offered um, through the DCI Supportive Care and Survivorship Resources. We have those listed here uh, again. So um, yoga classes, Tai Chi, lots of physical well-being support, self-image services. We have financial and legal support, a teen and young adult oncology program, and that's just naming a few. Um, if you go to dukecancerinstitute.org forward slash supportive care, you're going to see all these listed out there for you. There's also a really awesome calendar that outlines you know, when, what time, what day, a lot of these um, services are being offered, whether they're individual or group format, et cetera. Um, we include here the, the email and the phone number for Duke Cancer Patient Support Program as well. So if any of those services that Kelly was just describing um, seem like they might be of use to you, um, that would be the group to contact. So that's the email and that's the phone number. Someone will, will, will get you set up with what you need. Um, if you like the progressive muscle relaxation, I think Kelly alluded to this, there are a lot of recordings available on YouTube of that. So if you simply Google progressive muscle relaxation recording, you're going to have a lot of options. So you can pick if you want something long, something short, something with music or without, uh, male voice, female voice. Um, you can try out, you know, all of them and experiment on the one that works best for you. Um, and finally, I think Tammy mentioned this at the start of our session, but we have a lot of really great research studies going on at the Duke Cancer Institute. If you are interested in learning more about those research opportunities, you can contact Kelly or myself directly. Um, so we have added our emails here as well as our phone numbers. Um, we can direct you, you know, to, to the one that might be the best fit for you and what, what you're dealing with right now. Um, at this point, we will kind of open it up for general questions. I think Tammy has been answering some of them along the way, but um, Kelly and I, as well as Tammy, would be happy to address any others that you might have. Great. Thank you guys, that was great. And thank you all for your um, participation in the question and answer, such fun things up there and some really good questions. Um, so one of the questions that I did answer there uh, was related to, um, do you do PMR when you're stressed or do you uh, do it to prevent stress? And we would say both. Um, ideally you would do it, uh, we would say twice a day, find a time to do that. Um, and we know that it can actually lead to decreased stress in the future. Uh, but if you get busy or um, you forget, um, doing it in the moment is great too. And using that mi like a mini practice like we did early is, is a good option too. Um, another question uh, that we had was, um, how many times should I practice mini relaxation? Hannah, Kelly, what do you tell folks when they ask that? Yeah, I can take that one since I guided that practice. So because that one is so short, you know, 30 to 60 seconds, we actually love folks to do that about five to 10 times a day um, as just, uh, again, sort of preventative, almost kind of like brushing your teeth. If, if you do it even before you're stressed, you're gonna be more likely to keep those stress levels low throughout the day. 
Uh, and then, of course, you can use it as needed. So if you have a really stressful email come through or something happens, you know, with kids at home, you can use it in response to that spike in stress as well. So maybe start with about five times a day and then you can work your way up. I've had people use it 20 times a day. There's, there's really no upward limit to it. So another question is, uh, can you give examples of research studies that are currently recruiting? Um, I think we all could do that. So I'll talk about um, a study that is recruiting um, women who've had a breast cancer diagnosis uh, with pain uh, that has been ongoing for several months um, and giving them what we call pain coping skills training um, to help them learn the strategies that we talked about today, also with some other strategies and seeing how they're doing um, afterwards. Uh, we also have a number of research studies around um, adherence to adjuvant therapy for breast cancer patients. Um, we have a virtual reality uh, study for pain. I'm hitting heavy on the pain ones, uh, but Kelly and Hannah, do you guys have other ones that come to mind quickly for you? Kelly, I'll let you go first. Yeah, I can talk kind of briefly about my study. So I'll be um, recruiting specifically patients with advanced stage lung cancer and testing out some coping skills training um, focused on strategies to help with managing distress, with managing emotions, and also some mindfulness focused strategies to help you to tune into how you're thinking and feeling. Um, so that's that's my plug for my work right now. Yeah, and, and I'll just wrap up by saying I have a study that's going on right now that is testing a mindfulness-based sleep and symptom management intervention for folks with different types of cancer. So we're really, we're really focusing on kind of the 24-hour picture, nighttime sleep problems, as well as daytime symptoms as well, like fatigue, and pain, and stress. Um, Okay, I see a number of other questions here. Um, I had noticed one in the chat about what to do after you identify your flavor. <laughs> that's, that's a good question. So um, once you sort of know how stress shows up for you, you're gonna be better able to catch it first. Oh, okay, I'm feeling stressed. Um, and then you wanna have sort of some techniques that you can keep in your back pocket to use. So we've covered a few today the mini relaxation, progressive muscle relaxation, and pleasant activity planning. So if you're someone that feels stress physically, then maybe progressive muscle relaxation is gonna be your go-to. Um, so really working to tense and then release those various muscle groups. Now, let's say you're someone that feels stress more emotionally, maybe doing something fun, getting out for a walk or calling a friend or watching TV, listening to a podcast, a pleasant activity is gonna be your best go-to. So you'll start to find sort of what your match is uh, and, and through you know, experimentation, you'll, you'll come to sort of have your, your go-to stress management techniques. Great, thank you. So we have another question um, about what technique can you use for a panic attack? Um, how can you do something speedy to break the cycle? Um, so this is a really uh, good question, uh, one that a lot of people have. Uh, and um, it is definitely one of the services that we can provide. So um, it depends, you know, there's a lot of variation in a panic attack. Do you have them often? How long have you had them? Um, but when I hear people talk about panic attacks, it's awful, but the good thing is that we know we have a lot of really good strategies and interventions for those. So um, if that's something um, that uh, anyone is struggling with, I'd encourage you to, to reach out to us um, and, and let's see if we can get you um, connected with somebody that can do some intervention around that. Right. Yeah, absolutely. You yeah, to kind of piggyback off that, I think um, somebody had asked a question about, you know, being a couple hours away from Duke and whether they can get services. I think Tammy answered it, but with that, um, you can receive the services through cancer patient support virtually. A lot of them are. So if getting to and from the cancer center and having an additional appointment is something that's getting in the way of you seeking those services, um, we find that they can be super effectively delivered via telehealth just like this. So keep that in mind as well. 
Mm -hmm. Yeah, I saw another comment or question come through about not having a lot of time to relax, manage stress. Totally understand that, you know, um, when you're dealing with cancer treatments on top of work, family responsibilities, there's, there's not much time left for much else. Um, what I'll say is that um, little short management of stress is better than waiting and doing one long practice sporadically. So if you can just start with very short, maybe the, the mini relaxation, 30 to 60 seconds a day, and try to be consistent with that, that might kind of get your foot in the door. It seems a little bit less daunting than, oh gosh, you know, I need to sit down for this, you know, six or 10 minute, you know, progressive muscle relaxation practice. Um, I also think, you know, trying to celebrate success that you have, even if it doesn't eliminate stress, but even just kind of dial the needle down a bit is something that, you know, you should, feel proud of. You know, we're probably never going to be able to get rid of stress entirely. And I think Kelly mentioned this. We don't really want to do that. Honestly, a little bit of stress is good for us. It keeps us motivated. It helps us prepare for tests, you know, work uh, presentations. It keeps us going to our appointments. So we want a little bit there, but even just kind of dialing that needle back a bit, you know, is, is certainly better than nothing. Yeah, I think that was one of the great questions that kind of came in beforehand, like why is stress bad, right? Stress gets this really bad reputation and it's not all bad, right? We do need a little bit of it, but kind of noticing if stress is really getting in the way of you um, being able to do the things that you want to do or need to do, right? And it's impacting your quality of life, um, then it definitely makes sense to try to integrate some of these strategies. Thank you. Well, thank you everyone for being here. Um, our contact information was on the screen as well as Duke Cancer Patient Support Program. Um, we have a number of folks that kind of do these things individually with people. Please don't hesitate to um, reach out to us if something um, caught your attention today or you think that we might be able um, to help. So, um, you know, we sometimes we do one or two appointments with people. Sometimes we do half a year, two years, three years with people. So, um, you know, let us evaluate it. If you're interested at all, please don't hesitate to reach out. Um, I'd like to thank our panelists for sharing their knowledge and experiences today. Um, for those of you out there, I'd encourage you to take advantage of just a couple remaining offerings through Survivorship Day. Um, remember, our recordings will be available to you. Um, and um, again, please be in contact with us. Um, and thanks for attending this and participating. It was a lot of fun.